welcome 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 to first like conversations and if you're listening to us on spotify the iheart radio app or apple podcast welcome to the first like podcast my name is rupert misik i'm a clinical hypnotherapist and counselor operating out of my practice here in queensland australia first like counseling now this week i wanted to have a chat about low self-esteem as a therapist i found that when someone comes to you with a problem the label they put on it is a simplification of many issues come together to form this thing that's plaguing them i won't say low self-esteem is the worst for that but it's up there that's because it's comorbid with so many other issues ptsd depression anxiety and several others it even has a chicken or egg situational relationship with other issues as well. For example, sometimes you need to discern if a low self-esteem is the result of a person's depression and anxiety, or is their depression and anxiety the result of their low self-esteem? Persons with low self-esteem certainly have avoiding coping styles. You know, the, I won't bother trying to cook dinner because I'm not good at anything that kind of narrative but that has a way of coming up where are they choose or do they have a low self-esteem because they've developed one over years of using the avoidance to cope with issues or are they coping with issues by using avoidance because they have a low self-esteem so you see, we can spend days and days sorting through the quagmire of chronic self-criticism that is low self-esteem. But today, I'll just deal with one of those issues, um, and that's unrealistic self-assessment. Low self-esteem obviously isn't a product of the social media age, but social media certainly has made contributors to low self-esteem, such as unrealistic uh, self-assessment, more prevalent. Now, there's no point in demonizing social media. If an unrealistic self-assessment is at the core of your self-esteem issues or a major contributor to it, it would be an issue you have to sort out whether social media existed or not. For example, in the ancient days of the 1980s and 90s, people went to work on school on a Monday and were regaled by coworkers about their wonderful weekends or they listen to people returning from vacations telling tales about their wonderful exotic holidays. And let's face it, when you take out all the people that you didn't talk to at work or school, or those people who would rather not talk about their private life at work, it was only one or two people every so often. What social media does is potentially pay place hundreds of people in front of you displaying what you believe, because let's face it, there's no way of truly knowing what you believe are exciting, fun-filled lives. But the potential assault to your self-esteem isn't the coworker or even the social media. It's your tendency to compare yourself to others that's the problem. The problem is your unrealistic self-assessment of yourself after you've made that comparison. The way you assess your life, your achievements, even your happiness becomes unrealistic because the thing you're comparing yourself to is not realistic. Everyone talks about the beautiful beach they spent the weekend on, not the two hours of traffic they had to sit in, the half an hour it took for them to find a spot, or the sand flies they had to fight off when they get there. Why would they? Nobody wants to hear about that. An unrealistic self-assessment can raise doubts about self-worth, potentially leading to issues like anxiety and depression. Today, the person I have to help me speak about this is uniquely positioned to do so. She's a clinical hypnotherapist and personal trainer. In addition to being a wife, mother of two sons, she is a professional bodybuilder. She holds 11 titles in all, including one pro title and three amateur world titles. So I'd just like to introduce um, Joanne Black. How are you doing today, Joe? Good, how are you, Rupert? I am absolutely fine. Good. And thanks for joining me, me today. Um, and I could tell, well, not I could tell, I know from your sash and your crown that yeah. you have a new endeavor coming up, a, a new mountain to climb, so to speak. 
Yeah. So you're the finalist in the Miss Australia Galaxy pageant for 2022 now, right? Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's coming up um, April next year. So as a finalist, um, the event, the big day will be uh, 22. Hopefully all is good in the crazy world that we're in right now. So that will be held in Sydney. Oh, okay. Yeah. And how are you feeling about it so far? I'm excited. Um, it's very different to anything I've ever done. And um, thank you for introducing me so well there with all of those facts. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I've done uh, a lot of bodybuilding in the past, however, and I've also done um the pageant um events however this one really sort of focuses on different areas and it's uh, community involvement and also helping others in need so other than this is something for me it's also a really good opportunity for me to give back and and get some ideas flowing so i'm in that planning mode at the minute so it's really exciting okay that's great yeah now I know one of the aims of the pageant is to like provide a platform for delegates to become role models by overcoming fear or gaining more confidence, right? Um, now, like I said, you, you're a bit of in, in, in a unique position to do this because um, in addition to be a therapist, you're a personal trainer, um, but also you're the mother of two sons now who are now young men, right? Yeah. And how did you, how did you help nurture their self-esteem and confidence? Yeah, that, that's something that, you know, I'll, I'll probably do forever until, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sure my job will never be done. Um, yeah, praising praising their efforts, but knowing not to sort of over-praise mm -hmm. and recognising, you know, that any failures that they do have are just um, attempts to remind them that there's another way forward and and that we're all me and his, their dad um johnny are always proud of them and to never give up on the dreams on what they want and that mm -hmm. they will succeed if, if they just focus on the strength so we try and really bring out their strengths and be positive and look at what they are really good at and how they can use any achievements that they've had before for in in the future and mm. yeah just to build that independence and giving them trust to do things themselves so that's something we've done from being small sometimes it is easier just to put their shoes on tie their laces strap them in the car but just to try and allow them some time and be patient to learn for themselves and sometimes that does mean making mistakes mm. but you know letting them recognize that what would be another way next time and mm. uh, just so they feel good and also being a role model myself as well is a big one so having self-belief in my own life and goals and um yeah hoping that they're modeling off me and even if it's not apparent right now that i'm i'm planting seeds all the time that i'm hoping will blossom and grow beautifully over the years and the mm. choices and the own way forward so for me to just role model the best i can mm. Now, I know we're talking about like self-esteem in the context of like unrealistic self-assessment, right? Mm. Now, like both you and Johnny um, are are competitive athletes. And, and in Johnny's case, I know he trains competitive athletes as well too, right? right. Um, so, I, you know, comparison and sizing up an opponent, like evaluating your skill level against theirs, is, that's kind of that kind of goes with it, right? It's a standard part of the process. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh -huh. and, but how do you do that in a healthy way sort of thing? Yeah, so to, uh, definitely in sports, um, you, you're looking at your opponent and, and the strengths that they have and being able to use that um, for your own, um, to your own benefit. And so you know what you need to work on um a lot of the bodybuilding and the boxing you know you might look at some of their performances look at how they are either in the ring or on on stage and you're you're not matching yourself up to them um you're still your unique self in your athlete and you've got a lot of strengths there but you know to to know what you're up against and always believe that you know you're you're a winner even from the before you step in the ring or before you step on stage, you need to believe that you've got this, that you've won and mm. not let that self-doubt come in. And it, 
it's I look at it as preparation so when you are eyeing up another athlete on what they're bringing to the game it's in preparation for you to go in there knowing there's no stone unturned that um so that you know it's good sportsmanship there's no sort of negative feeling on that or um it's a lot of positive mindset going on in your own head that no matter what they have you've got more and you're going to do it you know so mm -hmm. uh, yeah you're you're eyeing them up for your own benefit really mm. uh, to bring something to the game that's a little bit better mm. so yeah. there's there's kind of very little wishing you had what they had go or have going on is it no definitely not you know um it, it's knowing what you're going to be up against it's a bit of preparation mm. but um keeping focused on your own game and what you need to do um to be to be the best on the day mm. and um yeah so it's not really wishful thinking it's more action oriented of okay this is what i'm up against w what do i need to present to um be the better person you know mm -hmm. yeah and do the self esteem and self confidence do they do they lead to success you fancy I, I believe so yeah it's a very big factor i think they go sort of hand in hand mm -hmm. um it's pretty difficult to achieve without the self belief that you can do it so you, you've got to believe that and then action onto that um and this is going to create more opportunities so if, if um you've got self-confidence and self-esteem you, you'll take any opportunities that come your way or you, you'll make your own opportunities as well and mm. that that can only lead to success so yeah I, I do believe that that's a really big factor yeah mm. now as as a therapist or you, and even as you know in your um your personal training uh hat as, as a professional you might have people that show up with damaged self esteem right yeah yeah definitely yeah how do you build up a client coming to you for with with that essentially yeah to to look at any past achievements so uh, um whether it's personal training or hypnotherapy or life coaching always having that um consultation and taking that time to really build a rapport so the client can open up um with those presenting issues and finding out what's going on and then um, being able to draw on what their actual achievements and successes in the past have been, and that they can use those then to take into any future goals that they've got. So mm -hmm. any any sort of failures and finding out, you know, they've got this damaged self-esteem, um, but to find out what they've learned from those past failures and use the learnings. And I, I use a strategic approach with that in the consultation or interviewing sort of time and mm. challenge any of those negative beliefs that a client does have on their self and, and, and the beliefs that they've got, you know, it might be, I'm not good enough. I'm not clever enough. I'm not pretty enough. There's all, all these things going on and it's like, well, compared to what, and mm. what criteria do you have to decide that that's true? Um, you know, and, and looking at why you've got those beliefs, however, you know, sometimes the damaged self-esteem, why they've got them is in the past and, and that doesn't matter too much. Sometimes the client needs to know and to delve into why they've got them to be able to move forward. But mm. a lot of the time it's the past is done and we can't change that, but we can definitely change the future and, and what they're going to do in the present can determine, um, you know, how they move forward with any of those sort of damaged self-esteem issues. Mm. So, I'm um, doing that these different ways. Uh, using the how questioning is I found really powerful, and that's something in the strategic psychotherapy that I use as part of the clinical hypnotherapy. Well, how do you determine that belief's true, and how is it working for you, and mm. um, how is it purposeful? Uh, mm. How do you sort of gain from this throughout the process that you're running? So um, them really questioning themselves and they can come out with the aha moments and then move forward and trying to sort of navigate from that fixed mindset of that label of, you know, whatever, I'm not clever enough or whatever they've, they've given themselves. Um, mm. But yeah, the, the interviewing process can really give some um, good sort of um, aha moments to the client to be able to then work 
with that and I am a big believer in affirmations as well so I know they're not for everybody mm -hmm. um, I do believe that affirmations are a great way of working on the subconscious mind and um, and daily gratitude for what they've already have uh, mm. and I do believe that um, gratitude and affirmations are a great way to um, you know heal some of that self-esteem that's maybe been damaged for whatever reason in the past mm. Mm. now i i it's funny you mentioned fixed mindset I, I a couple of weeks ago i had a chat with my wife about uh growth mindset right um i'll include the link to that somewhere on this video after i figure out how to do that but how important it is for your client success that they believe that achieving their goal is up to them that that their success can be achieved through their own hard work and good strategies. Yeah, the, very important, um, mm -hmm. you know, to overcome fears, obstacles, and, and when we're learning something new, it, it does require a growth mindset and um, to take a calculated risk. It does mean that a client has to sort of leave their comfort zone and there is some investment. There is a lot of investment there on, on their behalf. So it might mean some sacrifices in order to gain, which is, ultimately it's their choice and it is their decision and um you know whether they are investing time their energy or their you know their money and um, it is up to them on on their own success mm. and I, I try and explain to my clients that it's like a three-legged stool um so in that stool there's a me as their therapist or their trainer and then there's um the model on the strategies the training that we're using and then there's also themselves as well and the client is always the biggest part of that sort of three-legged stool and mm -hmm. um so the other two can work very effectively so to work with a trainer or a therapist and the model that they're sort of providing and the experience that they're bringing is very effective as long as the client's working and that's the main thing so yeah definitely it's up to the client on on the choices that they make and and the success that they have is ultimately up to them mm. Mm. and if you could change anything in society that you think uh kind of hurts people's self-confidence the most what would it be um yeah I, I think that the only um one thing that i would change is to for us to understand what we control and what we don't control. Mm. Um, and that is our own internal world and our mind. So that would probably be the only one thing that I would change. And um, too often there's a lot of concern on people's negative opinions or comments and the beliefs and, and their actions and behaviors. And, and that that is just far too much to change. And there's always gonna be something that happens, you know. Um, so yeah as as humans just to stop controlling what what we can't and and mm -hmm. i would that would be one thing i would change is that as as human beings we just control what we can and i think that would make a huge difference to the world and and that's mm -hmm. a lot of the work that i do as a clinical hypnotherapist um and as a life coach is for the clients to be able to recognize what they control and what they do and when it's mm. none of their business and when it is their business mm. you know and i think if we could all change that mindset that would make a really big difference to the world mm. now i mentioned social media before and like i said you know low self-esteem existed way before social media did right mm. but um our generation didn't grow up with it right Mm. What, were, what if you could think back to your teenage years what was what was the challenge for teenage joanna's self-esteem um as a teenager ah well you've got me on the spot there <laughs> let me think um probably looking into the future a little bit too much and taking mm. life too seriously mm. um you know um thinking that i had to have it all figured out and you don't, you know, you you don't, you can't plan for years mm. ahead. So I think as a, a younger teenager, it would be just to not sort of keep um, looking into the future with uh, maybe some 
you know, running a bit of negativity or being a bit pessimist of what if this goes wrong or, you know, a bit of anxiety on what if I don't get here or what if that doesn't happen and just to sort of take it as it goes and, and just to live life in the present and going into the future in that area of the unknown with a little bit more peace and calmness, I think. Yeah. Mm. Now, of late, there's been a kind of a, a big push toward being body positive, right? Mm. Uh, in in kind of this, the, the mental space, obviously, with the therapy and the coaching, and then on the physical space with the the personal training, what, what does body positivity mean to you? It means to accept the body that we have in present. And I am a really big believer in that. And then it's definitely something that I do try and um, um, hash, uh, hashtag it on my social media or, you know, explain to my clients that um, to be happy in the present with the body we've got and to be grateful for the body that we've got that's working for us, not to compare ourselves to other bodies um, and just to focus on ourselves and not concern ourselves with others and and just to be sort of mindful of and um, that all the bodies around us are beautiful, you know, mm. and we're all unique. And as a personal trainer, I do notice other bodies and I love all, all bodies and see the positivity in in all different bodies no matter what their size or shape or you know whatever's going on just to appreciate what we've got and and it is okay to want to change that's fine as well so just because you have that acceptance of the body that you've got doesn't mean that you don't need to want something different um and yeah just to sort of look at you know we might have a different body in our future selves that we've had we have visions of Mm. And we might also have some goals to get there and there might be a different body that we had in the past you know in our younger self and um, what what is important really is the here and now and what you do today and to be at peace in the mm. body you have right now here today and um if we make choices that are maybe not taking a step forward to that future body that we want just to be kind to ourselves and and it's okay that's fine you know we are humans we're not machines mm -hmm. and just to keep moving forward and accept just self-acceptance and we're always going to change um whether it's through age um childbirth you know whether it's through um illness whatever's going on um you know stresses of life can take its toll is to always just accept and be fully grateful and be at peace with who we are each and every day. Mm. And, um, yeah, that's I'm definitely a big believer. If you want to change your body, that's fine, but you've got to be happy with the body that you've got mm. right now and have your, have your goals and work towards them. Do you think that idea of the kind of standard beauty or ideal beauty, you think that I, that that's changing? Yeah, definitely. Yes, I do. I actually went past and it was really nice to see bras and things um, just this week when I was in, I think it might have been the Orion or um, mm. one of the shopping centres. And some of the, the girls that they've got in the window on the, um, you know, on, on the, on the, um, screens on the um, pictures there they're, they're, they're bigger girls and that's really lovely to see uh, mm -hmm. very healthy bodies curvy um you know around but it's also good that they've still got you know the other ladies that are maybe a little bit sort of slender mm -hmm. up and down because those girls that are maybe not curvy are wishing there was and the girls that are curvy are wishing there was stick thin so it's good mm -hmm. to have that variety it really is of all different shapes sizes skin colors turns and ages as well you know and having those ladies that are so beautiful that you know they've got different skin tone because that happens with mm. age and um to be able to see that you know a 50 odd year old woman can still rock a really nice underwear outfit for her husband that's maybe in his 50s you know mm. it's not all 21 year old girls um so now i think it's fantastic i think it's a great thing so things are definitely changing um, social media, you know, there's um, 
a lot of um, businesses, companies are using a variety of models as well now. So I think it's I think it's fantastic. And then you know, there's people can go out there and 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 they've got this dream, and they can you know it's achievable and it's realistic. And they're seeing other girls that are maybe similar to them, and they've got. Um, yeah, something to sort of really sort of be inspired by that's not unrealistic. Mm. Yeah. I, I went uh, just kind of so I knew what I was half talking about when I spoke to you <laughs> about like the bodybuilding in particular. And mm. I, I, on one of the um, associations that, that you, um, you know, you are athlete for, I, I looked at the rules and it's a crazy amount of scrutiny that um, a person <laughs> subjects themselves to I guess you know what I mean um so that it it could be a and I guess it, it's not for you at this stage but mm. it could be a, an intimidating intimidating prospect for a lot of people under normal circumstances how, how does your self-confidence emerge from that situation intact yeah I, um uh I'll be completely honest um absolutely fine i've had a, i've done a lot of shows and um i take it all um as feedback um i've done a lot of personal development and i've also had a lot of different therapy so i do feel i'm in a good position to be able to put myself on there in a panel of people you know be able to um say this say that give you a big written record of what they think your you know your performance was like and it, it's never affected my confidence ever at all and and i just work with that i mean some of the feedback i don't agree with and um that's okay it is a sport and and it is very subjective as well and and it's just i i know it's a panel of people it's a big panel of judges and it's it's their honest opinion you know and and i think that's important that i value that as well that um i respect that we've all got an opinion and we all see things in a different way and it's what they prefer and I fully respect that completely and we've all got a view and I decide after the show which parts I'll take on board and um you know which bits I want to build on so mm. if that, you know criticism there or I'll, I'll decide if it's going to be constructive to me and I'll build and work on that and if not I won't do anything with it I, it don't even go in I just go yeah I mean um you know it can be on um I've had my obviously they use the correct words but my bum's too saggy or um I've been on stage when a coach decided to put me on a bit bigger and I, and they said I want lean enough or you go on and you're too lean I've gone on on an evening gown dress and they said it didn't fit me properly the color didn't suit me and the heels didn't match um you know I didn't smile enough you go on and then you're really really smiley and it's like turn it down a bit so you know and it's their job they've got to give something back so um yeah I, I i'll i'll go back on the performance and i've had judges that have come up to me and said i thought you should have won you know mm. and then um so it is it's very subjective and they've all got an opinion and you've got to respect that and and you know we've we've all got an opinion and and what they prefer to see is um valid that mm. you know they're the judge on the day that's their job and and that, you know their opinion is valid on that day so and that, I, I think in today's day, people aren't shy about offering their opinions. Like there'll be strangers that basically will come off the street and tell you what they think about you and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's how, how do you make the determination of what person's opinion you take on and what you don't take on? Um, how do I do that? Um, if... <laughs> I probably do if it's already there it's there you know so if they've got an opinion if it's uh, probably if it's a, a family member as well if it was somebody really close like if it was my children or my husband and it was an opinion they had um mm -hmm. very much i care for that their um feelings and their opinions so that would be something that i would discuss further and and really sort of look at if it was if it was anyone else just <laughs> I, I, yeah it, you know I can take it on board or I do it and mm. and that's it really it's it's quite sort of simple on I think it's just a my you know it's like your subconscious and your conscious there's um the gatekeeper there 
does it let it in or doesn't it? And I think it's quite strong. And I just go, nah, I'm not letting that one in, you know. Or if it does, if I do get affected by it, there might be some work there that I, um, it was already maybe something that was a bit of a concern for me anyway. So if it was something that um, affected me, it's not that they've said it. It's probably because it's it's something already that was um, I was sort of believing, if that makes sense. Mm, mm. Yeah, so they're just highlighting something that I had a bit of an issue with anyway. Mm. Mm. There's a there's a, a quote you have on your your Instagram that I like a lot. It says self confidence. Uh, I guess there's a quote from you. Self confidence is like a superpower. Once you have it, the magic starts happening. When when did you first realize that, or when did you start realizing that? Um, I think with the self confidence. Definitely, it was, I think, probably, definitely with the bodybuilding, that's helped. Mm. Um, I did do some hypnotherapy uh, for confidence, to of, of getting on the stage. And also, I did a, a diploma um, certificate um, for life coaching as mm. well. And we did a lot about um, sort of self-confidence and having um you know your superpowers within you and and standing in that sort of you know power posing and i did work a lot on myself and that confidence and yeah one, once you've got it, it there's sort of no stopping you really so yeah. i think a lot of it was just self-development and working with others that knew a little bit more than me and training courses and just once i had that it, it's just like there's no going back um, I'll take calculated risks and look at, you know, whether it's realistic and, you know, whether this could work out. But if it's something that I want to do and it seems, you know, that the risk is OK, I'll, I'll go for it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I do think that the bodybuilding actually has helped a lot of that. And just related, unrelated, what misconceptions about health and wellness do mm. you wish people would stop believing? um yeah so the that it's a quick fix that's a big mm. one and that health and wellness it is a lifestyle so there's no real end date to it mm. so the um you know health and wellness if you've never had that sort of approach or you've never been in the industry or you you've never really worked on yourself um it can be seen as that you you know you do a program whether it's a, a therapy um you know like what we do as clinical hypnotherapists it's a short-term therapy or uh, you get a diet plan or an exercise program and um, these are all short-term things however it, um, the man and body continues to need training and um, to remain strong so it, it's not really a quick fix and it's not a short-term thing it's mm. something that we continuously do to improve all the time so it's like the growth mindset mm. um, so training the body and training the mind is something that, you know, if we don't want to um, decline and deteriorate and, and as we do in our physical body and our minds, just with age, we've got to keep working on it all the time. So there's no fixes, there's no short term sort of like little programs there. We might do programs, however, the mind and the body is something that we're continuously trying to improve on. I know like a part of the um, the Miss Galaxy pageant is becoming role models for other women. Yeah. What what if if I was uh, you know if I was a young lady, but if a young lady <laughs> were to um, to shadow you, what do you think they would be learning from you that they could take into their to into their life? Yeah, um, definitely the the Mrs. Galaxy pageant um, of being the best version of you is is one certainly something that caught my eye, and mm. that that's a big sort of um, thing that you know I said to my clients and to myself just to always you know focus on your own game and to be the best version of you to not um, to have your inspirations around you and your role models, but really to role model off your own future best version of yourself um, and have that there uh if if anybody was to sort of model me I, um i would like to hopefully um inspire those to um stay on their own track 
and be focused on their own self and their family and you know and the people that they love that are, are around them and um to always have that self-confidence and self-belief in what they want to achieve and to you know go for it and um yeah just to be able to believe in their self is a really big one i think and to try and keep a balanced lifestyle as much as possible which is quite hard when you've got your goals sometimes things are tipped a, a little bit but to understand that you know our life um has got many different areas to it so we've got our health and wellness um and our fitness goals and but we've also got our family and our careers and our education and our finance goals and and we're okay to spend so much time in one area um but then you know we need to sort of fill the bank back up later on and, and go back to that area and, and then we can sort of borrow from that time and 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 just try and keep that balanced life uh, and and which is something that it, it's not easy done it's certainly mm. not easy but just to be aware and that's what I hope that I'm role modeling for others just to um you know have that balance in their lives and to um I'm certainly um present for my children and for my family and I brought my two boys into this world so the the people that I really need to help and inspire and to role model and to um be the best version of me for is for my children because they're the future generation and and mm. you know they're my responsibility and to not be over responsible for everyone else and try and spread myself too thin my family is really everything to me mm. and um to yeah be my best because they are the the future generation and if I do my bit with my children and and um people continue then hopefully we'll we'll raise a good future generation but definitely I'm hoping that um I'm inspiring others to keep that family life balance and to they can have those goals you know we don't need to be selfless just because we're a mum we can still have our own um journey and and that's definitely something that I do and um that keeps you know by sort of me doing me I'm in the best version of myself to be able to um be there and be present and be strong for my children and uh, I would like other mums to role model from that to be able to keep themselves in a really healthy position physical body you know mentally um and then they can sort of help other people so you've got to help yourself before you can help the ones around you that you love yeah yeah well joe thanks for spending this time with me yeah absolutely the one of the most confident people i know so this is what this uh i couldn't find a better person to ask to help me have a chat about this you, you definitely walk the walk when it when it comes to this so appreciate oh, thank it much having me on it's been a good play it's been really nice no worries and good luck with your pageant thank you, you. Thank you. all right and to you soon thank you Bye. -bye.